My name is Lina Vadia and I work here at the ORF. Uh, many of you are familiar faces, so you know that already. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this event that we are organizing jointly with the Asia Society and the Consulate General, uh, Consulate General of Australia. Uh, um, um, before I do anything else, I'd like to welcome our guests with flowers. So I'm going to request my colleagues to welcome the speaker of this evening, Dr. John Lee. Our conversationalist, Ajit Ranade. The Consul General of Australia, Mr. Steve Waters. He's a friend, he's been here before. And Bunty Chan, who will take you through the evening, actually. Um, <laughs> maybe you should go from the front. Yeah. Yeah, now you will get them, or do you get them? <laughs> okay, I told them that you will get them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we also have a, a small tokens of appreciation for them from ORF, which I'd request Mr. Kulkarni to give. Yeah. <laughs> Towards the end of last year, in November actually, we, we at the ORF set up um, uh, this uh, forum for India-China citizens uh, dialogue and with the help of the Chinese consulate, we've been organizing a series of programs and we are happy to bring you one more in that series. Our aim has been to foster awareness, understanding, friendship and cooperation between our two countries and the very last, so we've done a whole range of activities. The last one on the 3rd of June was actually a serious one in which, uh, you know, a think tank from China came over and, uh, you know, representatives of the government of Maharashtra were here debating and discussing sustainable development. Um, so that was the last program, but we've also done fun things like organize uh, um, uh, you know, performances by uh, Chinese acrobatic troupe and even bring the famed Nelson Wang here to use our kitchen to dish out fabulous food to uh, Indian audiences. So it's a whole range and so this is one more program. I'll hand over to uh, Banti Chan from now on. Hi, good evening everybody. Uh, my name is Banti Chand and I think a lot of you out here know me and I'm the Executive Director of the Asia Society India Centre. And on behalf of the Asia Society, the Consulate General of Australia and the Observer Research Foundation, I'd really like to welcome you all to this evening's programme, China's Rise and the Road Ahead. And we are delighted to have with us today uh, John Lee, Director of Foreign Policy at the Centre for Independent Studies in Sydney, and Ajit Ranade, who is the Chief Economist of the Aditya Birla Group. And uh, Asia Society, as many of you do know, is the leading global organisation working to strengthen relationships and promote understanding among the people and institutions of Asia and the United States. The India Centre is part of Asia Society's global network of 11 offices. And we seek to connect India with the Asia-Pacific community by promoting mutual understanding, generating new ideas, and catalyzing collaborative actions across the fields of art and culture, policy, and business and education. And this program is part of our Asia Report series, which investigates critical socio-political and economic issues across Asia. And I would now like to invite Steve Waters, who's Consul General of Australia, and a good friend to say a few words and introduce our speakers. Thank you very much, Bunty. It's a great pleasure to be here this evening on such an occasion. But first, I would like to particularly thank the Asia Society and ORF for organising this event and providing a venue for a distinguished Australian academic to speak here in Mumbai. The subject tonight, China's rise and the road ahead, I think is an important one, not only to, the, I think, the, the audience here in India, but also, in fact, to Australia. And I say that because when I first came here, a number of people here in Mumbai made the point that they thought that 
Australia had become too close to China. I think in some ways that is a slight misreading of the events and I think it, it's one of those things that Australia has put a lot of work over the last 30 years into developing a good relationship with China. That relationship is primarily an economic relationship and that economic relationship means that China is now our largest trading partner but also the strong relationship with China allowed Australia to go through the global financial crisis as the only really Western economy that didn't go into recession. It's an important relationship in Australia, one of our top five relationships. Uh, but India is also in that top, one of those top five relationships. And the fact is, it's a point that we have made when talking with our colleagues in China, is that while we have a strong relationship, we also have our differences. Where there have been differences on our strategic views of the region. There have been differences because we're a liberal democracy and therefore there are um, issues that uh, we wish to discuss with the Chinese. But in developing that relationship, we've been able to do so and find mechanisms that allow those discussions to take place outside the glare of the media. In that relationship, I think one of Australia's key points is that you know, we do not believe in what was being called megaphone diplomacy and that's been important in maintaining that good relationship with China. In recent years, we've been building that relationship with India, and so now, in the last 12 months, we've put our diplomatic relationship with India, uh, or the level of representation, should I say, of our diplomatic relationship in India, uh, on a similar footing to that we, we have with China. We now have substantial consulate here in Mumbai, which 12 months ago was, mu was much, much smaller. So it really is, is, is one of those things that these are both very important relationships that uh, Australia has. Now, I've got away from what I'm actually here to do, and that is to introduce uh, as the speakers for tonight. Um, I might say that uh, you, you, will have read, you will have read through the, um, the information for the meeting, so I'm not going to quite go through all, all the details of Dr John Lee's career. But he is one of a group of of uh, sinologists and observers of China that Australia has produced over the last 20 and 30 years so that Australia has developed a reputation really of having one of the strongest groups outside the United States looking at issues of China. And that's been an important part in building the bilateral relationship with China and having some understanding of what, what is going on. Dr. Lee is actually currently is the director of the foreign policy of foreign policy at the Centre for Independent Studies in Sydney. He's a senior visiting fellow at the Hudson Institute and will soon, in, I think in, in September, take up a, a new position of uh, Associate Professor at Sydney University, Australia's oldest university and its second best university. I say that because I'm an alumnus of Sydney's great rival, Melbourne University, so we will, we will never concede on that particular point. But apart from having you know, an academic, academic background, Dr. Lee is also has his own commercial interest in being managing director of a research and conference company called L21. I haven't had the chance to ask him why L21, but I'm sure there's an explanation in there sub somewhere. But his fields of research have covered not only China, he has uh, had a, a related interest in foreign policy more generally, and particularly the foreign policies of the US and India, which of course are also integral to, to looking at China, but also of, of a number of the Southeast Asian states and, and Australia. He particularly came to prominence in, 19, in uh, 1997, oh, sorry, in 2007, I'm getting my decades mis mixed up, um, with his book, Will China Fail? Uh, that caused a great deal of discussions and I think established himself on, on, uh, as one of the, the, uh, the leaders in the particular field of Chinese, of Chinese commentary. Our inter his interlocutor for the night is a very distinguished economist. Dr. Ajit Ranade is the chief economist for the Aditya Birla group and prior to that held a similar position with ABM Anro. His professional career has all been both academic and in corporate. So we have, they have that similarity in that, in that regard. But I think the proof of his 
the regard with which he is held as economist is in some of the other positions that he holds as a member of the board of Indian Today Economists, as the chair of the Economist Forum at the Federation of Industries of the Chamber of Commerce, FICI, and as well as chair of the Research Advisory Panel of the Indian Institute of Banking and Finance. He's here tonight because he has also written a number of uh, pieces for the, for the, for the uh, media here on China. And I know it's, it's a personal interest he has in terms of looking at the Chinese economy and its relationship with China. His own academic background, he is actually an alumnus of two of India's most distinguished educational institutions in IITB and IIM in Ahmedabad. So I look very much forward to their, to their conversation.